Hare Krishnan, or she's known as Nanda to family and friends, who is a well-known artist, author, and engineer. She's a true example of the pursuit of passion and creativity. Professionally, Downey started her journey as an engineer. However, she had an unwavering determination to follow her heart, and she made a significant shift in her career, and she embraced the role of an early childhood educator. So she is really loved by all her young kids in her class. And she, her dedication and skill in these art forms earned her two records in the prestigious, prestigious Indian Book of Records and an additional two records in the acclaimed Asia Book of Records for creating the smallest Wagli and Madhubini paintings. She is also a prolific author with a diverse literary portfolio that includes a novel and a collection of poetry. And some of her popular publications are available on Amazon. She has written books for young kids, and she has even dis uh, displayed that today. Uh, you have the, she has displayed the QR code. So, any of you with the young kids, I really recommend. Please go and check it out. Some of the some of her books are *The Whispering Silence*, and for the really young kids, *Lucy and the Small Fat Hen*, *Puri and Budgie*. I'm really interested to read that. <laughs> And wandering might unfolds. So, without much ado, I'm inviting Dolly or Nanda to speak a few words with us. Well, itrim book kya hai? Nirupa tree partner thi liye doare. So I'm so happy, so glad, and uh, a very good afternoon to all of you. It's my first time as a speaker, and uh, thank you, Extin Malayali Association, for giving me an opportunity to share my experience with all of you, with such a wonderful audience. I see this lovely audience over here, all with bright smiles and with beautiful outfits and vibrant colors. See, uh, don't you feel that the colors make us look so unique? Just imagine how it would be like if we all wore the same color outfit. It would have been boring, right? It's not going to look good. Of course, the colors add the vibrancy to all of us. Can you just imagine a world without colors? Impossible. I'm sure each one of you would have a favorite color. When I was a child, I used to love all the colors. I used to get fascinated by the colors. Colors used to make me so happy. I remember those days when I was in my kindergarten. We used to have those thick textbooks, uh, the thick workbooks that we used to carry every day to school and then bring back them home. We used to have a lot of homeworks by then. And the I had this habit of you know drawing these teeny tiny pictures on the papers of all the books. Like here and there, I used to draw the small drawings. And I I think at least a few of you might have that habit, if I'm not wrong. So I used to do this, and um, the best part was that neither my teachers nor my parents they never scolded me for that. In fact, they were pretty cool about it. And my mom, who was my teacher at home, she used to go through this. You know, she was the one who used to teach me at home, and she used to see these teeny tiny drawings of mine, and she used to feel happy. I could see that smile on her face. And at times she used to say that you know this looks beautiful. It's a color. So I used to feel so happy, and that was the greatest motivation that I've ever got. And even now, what she has said, those words, that keeps me going. And during my school days, I did participate for several um, art competitions, and I was blessed enough to get into inter-school competitions. And uh, in my fifth grade, one of my artwork was published in a kids' newspaper in Middle East. And and this just went on with the world of colors, and I was happy with it. And my parents were really proud of me. And then this um, unfortunate incident happened in my life. Uh, it was in my sixth grade that I lost my mommy. I lost her, and then I was no longer in the world of colors. I just felt like all the colors just faded away from my life. I couldn't draw. I couldn't paint. I didn't. I was not no longer into this art or painting. But as you know, life is tough, and we need to keep moving. And it's then that I started, uh, you know, having two other habits, you know, two new habits or hobbies. 
The first one was that I started I started journaling. Nobody told me about journaling. I've never seen anybody doing it. But there was something in me that I really wanted to express myself or to vent out what there was within me. So I used to have this diary of mine and I used to write each and every night what happens in my life, what I have gone through or what I'm going through. And I used to hide this book somewhere in my cubby so that nobody reads it. And the second other habit that you know I developed after that was writing letters to my aunt, my favorite aunt, my mom's younger sister who was in India. Those days we never had this WhatsApp or chat or uh, video calls or uh, FB messenger, nothing. The technology wasn't that advanced those days. So we used to send physical letters. We used to take a paper, write down the letter, we used to fold it, put it in an envelope and send it with a stamp on it. And it takes time to reach India. And once she gets the letter, she has to do the same thing and send it back to me. I used to wait patiently for receiving her letter. It might take even two weeks, but once I get the letter, I used to be so excited and I used to be so happy. And now, still I'm in touch with that aunt and still we have chat and video calls and all that. But trust me, the feeling, that special feeling I got those days when I used to get letters from them, from her, I have never experienced this through this uh, chat or Facebook messenger or video calls. And then uh, during my high school, um, one day, I don't know why, the memories of my mom was like there throughout within me. I was living in that. And once I decided, let me just, I just felt like writing something. I don't know what it was. I just took a paper and I just poured out my heart on that paper. And it somehow turned out to be a poem. And I took this to one of my friend, my best friend at school, and she read this. And she told me that she was really impressed. And she told me it's really good. I never knew that you could write something like this. And I was I was really happy, but I said, even, I don't know. I just poured my heart out of on this paper and I don't know if it's a poem or what you can call it. But I still have that paper. I have kept it safely with me. And after my high school, it was college. And my dad wanted to send me for engineering. Being a good daughter, it was my um, responsibility to fulfill my dad's dream, though I wasn't passionate about going for engineering. And the four years of engineering just went off. All I did was art and poetry was just for the sake of competitions. And then I got a job, I got married, and then I was busy in life. But always when I went for work, I always felt that I missed something. I was sure what I was missing. I was never satisfied with my work. No matter I go to do, do the work for the sake of it, I never used to smile from my heart. I always felt there's something missing in my heart. And I used to dig so deep to know what is that thing, the factor that I'm missing. And it took me years and years to realize that, this engineering and the jobs related with that, that was not my cup of tea. That was never. And it was five years ago that you know I changed or shifted my career into early childhood education. I love being with the kids, those preschool preschool kids. You know, teaching them new things, training them, nurturing them, being a part of them. That brought me a lot of happiness. That brought me joy. And then you know I was I was so happy. And then no longer that missing factor within me that was not missing anymore. And slowly I got back into the world of colors. I got back into a world of writing. And I'm a self-taught artist, so I start experimenting with colors. I try different kind of art forms, and I used to love all the art forms, but I was very much fascinated by Madhuri and Wally painting. Even now I'm too much obsessed with those paintings, I don't know why. And by God's grace, I could participate uh, in the India Book of Records and the Asia Book of Records. And I have backed four records for the smallest Madhwani and Wally paintings. And thanks to God for that. Thank you. And that was not it. I continued painting. I continued uh, drawing. I just tried to find out or implement this me time in my schedule. As we know, we all are busy. So there should be some me time for us to do something, you know, what we like, what makes us happy. So I just tried to implement that in my schedules. And at the same time, I was 
in the world of writing too. I wanted to publish a novel and a novel where my mom was a part of it, where I could express or where I could just share my experiences as a childhood, as during my teenage. And I could do it successfully in 2018. That was the first novel that I published. And I was, I was happy about it. I felt satisfied and I felt that, you know, the, the confidence in me that boosted up. And then I continued my job and I was really happy being with the kids. And I felt that, you know, I love telling stories to kids, narrating stories to kids. And of course, stories, uh, I used to do that to my son as well. So I thought, why not write a story for the kids? Why not try to make them happy? So I started thinking about writing storybooks for the children, for the young children, and I was able to do it. And I'm still continuing to do it, and I've published almost four children's books, and I have decided and that I would publish at least one children's book every year. And in front of you, if I'm saying it with so much of confidence, it's the passion within me that has made me stand in front of you and say this. So it's not the monetary benefit what you get out of it. It's, it's nothing about the earning, but it's about the satisfaction we get, the happiness we get when we do something we really love. So to each one of you, what I want to say is that there is a passion in all of you. I'm sure there is a hidden passion in all of you. Some of you might be aware of it and some of you might not be. But there would be some things that would pull you back. There would be questions popping out of your head like what would people think? How would people judge me? These were the two questions that always used to haunt me and that used to pull me back and put me down. But trust me, no matter where you go, it's nothing to do with art or it's nothing to do with poetry or writing. No matter whichever, whatever field you choose, there would be a set of people who would be there to criticize us. But be open to constructive criticisms where you can improve yourself. But just leave the negative part aside. Don't ever doubt yourself. Self-doubt is the biggest problem. Don't ever doubt yourself. Just believe in yourself, whatever you do. And you do things with passion and with confidence. There's nothing that can stop you ever to achieve anything. The whole universe is going to make you, you know, achieve your dreams. And also don't compare. Many of us have a feeling of comparing ourselves with others. We would be thinking, oh, maybe the other person is doing it better than I do. And what will others think? Again, it comes to the same loop, you know, what would others think? You don't have to compare yourself to a different person. Everybody is unique. Whether it's art or whether it's uh, writing, poetry, anything, you are the creator of your creation. So it's up to you to decide what you create. And you have the 100% freedom to make the creation as per you like, your wish. So don't ever compare yourself with anyone else. Compare yourself with you. Try to be a better you. Try to improve. And please don't compare. And always believe in yourself. As someone said, always leave a signature, a mark of yourself on this earth, on this world before you go. So my friends, just go and chase your dreams and nothing is ever going to stop you. Believe in yourself. Thank you.